Welcome to the Superglottic Airway Device Skills. These progressive skills are designed to evaluate your ability to provide immediate and aggressive ventilatory assistance to an apneic adult patient who has no other associated injuries. This is a non-trauma situation and cervical precautions are not necessary. You are required to demonstrate sequentially all procedures you would perform, from simple maneuvers and adjuncts to the placement of a superglottic airway device of your choosing. You will have three attempts to successfully place the superglottic airway device. You must actually ventilate the mannequin for at least 30 seconds with each adjunct and procedure utilized. Your preceptor will serve as your trained assistant and will be interacting with you throughout these skills. Your preceptor will correctly carry out your orders upon your direction. Upon your arrival to the scene, you observe the patient as he goes into respiratory arrest and becomes unresponsive. A palpable carotid pulse is still present. Bystander ventilations have not been initiated. The scene is safe and no hemorrhage or other immediate problem is found. Arrive on scene with our gloves on, making sure that our scene is safe. We want to open the airway with a head tilt chin lift to verify that the patient is not breathing. If the patient is not breathing, we're going to choose the appropriate sized or feral GR airway. We're going to insert it and begin ventilation our patient. I'll ventilate my patient. 10 to 12 times per minute. That'll be once every five to six seconds. Okay, no difficulty. Uh, Paul Zox says that patient's O2 sat is 85%. 85%, I'm going to attach my BBM to supplemental oxygen, setting that at 15 liters per minute. I'm continuing with my ventilations at 10 to 12 times per minute, once every five to six seconds. Breath sounds are present and equal bilaterally. Medical direction is ordered insertion of a supraglottic airway. Okay, this time I'm going to ask my evaluator to take over the ventilation. I'm ventilating at 10 to 12 times per minute. Check my equipment, making sure I've got my combi tube, 100 milliliter syringe, and a 15 milliliter syringe in my KY jelly. I'll attach the 100 milliliter syringe to the number one port, the blue tube. Inflate the bulb, check to make sure it remains inflated, and then I'll draw the air back out, reset 100 milliliters, and reattach to the number one port. Inflate the number two. Port with 15 milliliters. Make sure that it stays inflated. Withdraw the air. Reset at 15 and reattach. I can verbalize lubricating the distal end of my tube with KY jelly, any water based lubricant. As I get ready to insert the common tube, my instructor will remove the the Orpharyngeal airway, stop ventilations, and I'll insert the common tube until the black lines are at the level of the teeth. I'll inflate 100 milliliters, 15 milliliters, removing both syringes. Have my partner begin ventilations. I'll also take over the epigastric region, listening for epigastric sounds over the right lung over the left lung. Epigastric sounds are present. No lung sounds present. Epigastric sounds are present. So we'll switch over to the number two. Ask him to ventilate. 
If the gastric sounds, checked. Right lung, checked. Left lung, checked. I do have breath sounds. Bilaterally, no epigastric sounds. So I'll secure the tube. I will also verify placement using capnography. Color metric, starting with purple. Apply. Ventilate. And I should see a change in the color metric from purple to yellow. Okay, I know that I'm pro ventilating appropriately because I'm getting equal bilateral chest rise of adequate depth. So we'll continue ventilating our patient. We verified uh, a couple of different methods. Color metric, I can use capnometry as well, that the tube is in the right place and uh, keep evaluating our patient.